Hello, my name is Kate and welcome to the local history of Northern Kentucky. This October marks the 20th anniversary for the current Erlanger branch located on Kitten Lands Road. So to celebrate, we're going to take a look back at the history of the Erlanger Library over the years. In 1914, the Erlanger Women's Club began to form a new library, which became the Erlanger Library, and it was started with 300 books, which the club collected through a book shower that they hosted. The library was operated by one librarian and several volunteers, and Mrs. Preston Wright was the very first Erlanger librarian. Katherine Stevenson was one of the individuals who was instrumental in forming the new library, and she also served as its librarian for many years, and this is a photograph of her on the right. By 1928, the club turned over its collection of books to the Covington Public Library with the agreement that more magazines and books would be added. Later that year, in September 1928, a new branch was opened in the Erlanger News Building on Dixie Highway, and this branch boasted 1,500 books and the librarian was paid $15 a month. In 1932, additional rooms were added, and this allowed for more books and shelving space. And a couple of years later, in 1934, the Erlanger branch moved to the Erlanger Citizens Bank building. That year, Mrs. Catherine Stevenson resigned from her position as the, the librarian at the age of 70. And two years later, in 1936, she passed away after um, having been ill for some time. And Mrs. Stevenson's daughter, Mary Alice Taylor, took over as the new Erlanger branch librarian. And it was reported that she resigned from this position in 1936. However, she remained actively involved with the library and later became the Erlanger branch librarian once again. Um, when she resigned, Mary Calker took the reins as librarian. And there was yet another change the following year as Miss Calker resigned due to her upcoming wedding and Sally Brown was then named as her replacement. In March 1939, the library made its next move to 8 Garvey Avenue in Ellesmere, and in July, not too long after the move, there was a fire at the branch, and firemen believed that the blaze was started by a lit cigarette, and the building housed both the library as well as a pool room that was operated by John Zitt, and they were separated by one wall. So the, the fire started in the pool room and crept into the library space. And firemen were told that the pool room had um, closed at 1030 that night and Ed Pinnell, a janitor at St. Henry Church, was the one who discovered the blaze and called for help. Librarian Sally Brown said that there were approximately 6,000 books in the library at the time, about 2,000 of which were either damaged or destroyed. And Mrs. Brown said that about 500 of the, of the books were burned to ashes and about 15 of them, or about 1,500 of them were water soaked. So she estimated that the cost of the books ranged from $1 to $10. And Ellesmere Fire Chief John Crowell said that the property damage was estimated between $300 and $400. Uh, many of the books were repaired for use and others had to be tossed. So moving into the 1940s, the library now had about 3,500 items, and the hours of the Erlinger branch were from 2 to 5 p.m. on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, and the library was still being operated by just one librarian and several volunteers. The library began experiencing some budget woes and did not have sufficient funds to keep operating the library, and this made it impossible to purchase any new materials. In 1942, um, the decision was made to close the library unless new funding could be secured, and no new funding came, so the Erlinger Women's Club once again took over full responsibility of the library and saved it from closure. This temporarily ended a 14-year partnership between the Covington Public Library and the Erlinger Ellesmere Library. And the 1950s saw a lot of growth for the Erlanger Library. The cities of Erlanger and Ellesmere contributed to the library's funding, and the Erlanger Women's Club held fundraisers to be able to per, uh, purchase new books. And the librarian, Mrs. Mary Alice Taylor, made plans to uh, purchase a more permanent spot for the library. And so, in 1955, the Erlanger Ellesmere Library Board was officially established, 
And about a year after that, the Erlanger Women's Club acquired a new property and they purchased the two and a half story home of Mr. and Mrs. Roy Klein at 97 Bartlett Avenue in Erlanger. And this space served as the new branch. It was noted that the first floor alone would have 30% more space available than its present location at Garvey Avenue. The total cost of the new library branch was $19,500, and the Erlinger Women's Club, the Lions Club, the Tuesday Evening Women's Club, the Betty Carter Morgan Women's Club, and other organizations and individuals chipped in to help make the $5,000 down payment that was required. To help alleviate the debt of the mortgage, the Women's Club regularly held fundraisers, and one example of this was a bazaar in December 1956 where refreshments were served and there were many booths displaying um, white elephant gifts for sale, baked goods, Christmas gifts, homemade canned goods, jellies, fruit cakes, Christmas wrappings, and ornaments. So although the new library was purchased in November 1956, it was dedicated in May 1957 during a ceremony held at Lloyd High School. And at this point, librarian Mary Alice Taylor had been actively involved with the Erlanger Library in various capacities for about 40 years. And at the ceremony, speakers gave the history of the library and they spoke about its value to the community. Um, one of the speakers was Dr. Ross Webb, and he was a history professor at the UK Northern Extension Center, um, which was the precursor to NKU. And in his talk, Dr. Webb spoke about the academic influence of libraries, and he predicted a happy future for the local institution. And he said, we live in a world of words. A library is in reality one of the most exciting of the possessions of humanity in any age for it contains answers to the questioning of youth, the know-how for the curious, the stimulant of the scholar, and the comfort for the sick and aged. In sum, it is the Shangri-La of all men. Patrons were enjoying the new library building on Bartlett, and then in 1958, the library had a special display of children's literature, as the Kentucky Post reported. In that year, um, Kentucky's state slogan for National Library Week was, Kentucky doesn't have to be backward. Wake up and read. Under the guidance of Mrs. Mary Alice Taylor, the collection at the Erlanger Library had grown, and um, by that time in 1958, just two years after purchasing the Bartlett property, the library was already in need of additional space. So although at this time there was not an active partnership between the Erlanger and Covington libraries, there was a big shakeup at Covington in 1958, and this was when um, Rebecca Cox retired after 18 years as the head librarian, and Marianne Mongan, who was from Cincinnati and was a former librarian for Newport, um, was hired as the head librarian. So there were objections from Covington area residents that an outsider was hired for Covington. And Ms. Mongan would direct the library system for the next 40 years. So um, to rectify the space issue, an addition to the building was constructed about 1962 and the community pitched in and supported the library with donations. Um, on the right is a photograph from August 1965 and here, the Erlanger Lions Auxiliary had uh, presented the Erlanger Library with a set of Encyclopedia Britannica, Encyclopedia Junior, and a five-volume set of books to help students prepare for college entrance exams. On the left is um, Mrs. Pat Day, committee member, then um, librarian Mary Alice Taylor, and then Mrs. Donald Burring, um, who was the publicity chairman. In April of 1967, Director Mary Ann Mongan spearheaded a camp campaign to form a Kenton County Library District, and having the branches organized as part of a county system rather than um, individual city libraries would make them eligible for state and federal aid, and also thousands of free books and other valuable resources would be made available from the Kentucky Department of Libraries. So furthermore, the new public library system would allow for expansion of the rapidly growing Erlanger Library. 
The campaign was successful, and in the summer of 1967, more than enough petitions were signed in favor of creating a Kenton County Library District. The Erlinger Library began the 1970s as part of the Kenton County Library District, and there were some staffing changes at the beginning of the decade, um, such as when Sister Alberta Hoffer, a Roman Catholic nun, was hired as a children's librarian for Erlinger and Covington. And she's pictured there on the left, and she created a new story time where she would sing and play the guitar for children. And during the early 1970s, the Covington branch was receiving a new building and moving out of its location at the Carnegie in 1974. So after the completion of this project, uh, focus was placed on the Erlinger branch and its need for more space. The library received a $225,000 grant to help pay for a new Erlinger branch, and this would replace the two-story converted house on Bartlett that the library had called home for 22 years. A site was chosen in early 1976 at Dix Dixie Highway and Montgomery Street because this area had a good volume of traffic and good public visibility. Also in 1976, Nancy Moore was hired as the branch librarian at Erlanger, and the image on the right shows the architect's rendering of the new building. And these couple of photos show the groundbreaking. In the photo on the right, several people are unidentified. However, um, Robert E. Hayes, the architect, is pictured along with George Widener, Ruth Eubank, um, Charles Whitmire Jr., Margaret Carl, and Judge Executive James Dressman is on the bulldozer. In September 1978, the new Erlanger branch was completed and open to the public, and the $1 million building at 3130 Dixie Highway held five times the capacity of the old building on Bartlett. On October 1st, the new branch held a cornerstone laying ceremony, and Judge Dressman installed the cornerstone, and this in included a letter from the board thanking the residents of Kenton County along with newspaper clippings about the new branch, a list of best-selling books for the day, and other memorabilia. These photographs at the top right um, from our Faces and Places database show the cornerstone laying ceremony. And then, um, or on the top, top left, and then on the bottom right, Alice Clay, um, a children's librarian, she was checking books into their new home at the Erlanger branch. So these are a few photographs of the interior. Um, on the left, Library Director Marianne Mongan is standing in the entryway, and then other photos show the circulation desk, tables and workspace, and bookshelves. And we also have many more interior pictures from this building in our Faces and Places database. And with a new building, the Erlinger branch started fresh in the 1980s, and as previously mentioned, Nancy Moore was hired as, in 1976 as the Erlinger branch librarian, and she's pictured here. And in 1988, she was interviewed by the Kenton County Recorder newspaper for their on-the-job feature. I really like hooking someone up with a book they need, she said with excitement during the interview. And while this was part of her position, she also talked about the stereotype where um, she said that people tended to think that all librarians did was read books. Um, Moore also discussed other responsibilities of the job, including managing a staff of 16 and buying books for the branch. And she would spend time each morning reading book reviews to help her determine which books to order. She tried to buy books that interested Erlinger patrons, and she said, I must have ordered um, 20 Danielle Steele books, and there's still a waiting list of 60 or 70. Buying books, coordinating book returns, and reclassifying older books were some of the more administrative duties of the job. However, um, Nancy Moore said that watching the eyes of a young child receiving his or her first library card or helping someone find a book to make a home repair made the job special to, to her. And she noted that when she got time off, she enjoyed reading mysteries and books about England were her favorites. 
Overall, the 1980s were busy for the library as the popularity of the Erlinger branch continued to increase. And on February 19th, 1980, the Erlinger branch set a new record, circulating 1,777 items in a single day. Summer programs in Erlinger were very popular with families, and the meeting room often had triple the amount of people that it could hold. And there became such a problem with space that tickets began being distributed for library programs. Um, children's librarian or children's programs at Erlinger um, were often filled to capacity, and also in the 1980s there was talk of automating the um, library's circulation system. However, with a the recession, there were no funds at the time to explore that. And um, as the library began to look into the next decade, um, automation and computers were uh, very much at the focal point. So in the summer of 1989, the staff began to prepare for one of the biggest projects that the library had undertaken, and this was automating the system. So staff began to automate the library's um, records um, and, the, and all records of materials purchased, ordered, processed, and shelved um, for patrons had to be converted into a format that could be read digitally. So this process was noted to be tedious and time consuming and the library was closed from August 6th through the 18th, 1990 so that items could be fitted with a barcode and um, this uh, made it possible for the computer software to scan it for record keeping. And pictured on the left is library employee Alice Clay with a souvenir shirt commemorating the project. And also in February 1990, the Erlanger Women's Club, who founded the library in 1914, re-landscaped the Erlanger branch. And this gift was done in honor of the club's 75th anniversary. In the late 1990s, um, also saw a number of staffing changes. After 40 years as the library director, Marianne Mongan retired in 1999, and um, associate director Wayne Onks became the new director pictured on the right, and lastly, Anita Carroll took over as Erlanger's branch librarian. And the popularity of the branch continued to soar, and space continued to be tight, and parking was um, inadequate, as was the children's room, and there was no shelf space for any additional materials. So the Erlinger branch had become the busiest library in the state of Kentucky, and it boasted more than 360,000 visitors per year. Um, in the later part of the decade, board members and library staff looked at more than 20 potential sites for a new branch. Also, by the end of the decade, each library, um, Covington, Erlanger, and Independence, um, not only had computers for each staff member, but also made computers available to all patrons. So after much searching, land was purchased for $925,000 at the corner of Kenton Lands Road and Halbert Avenue. And as with the previous building on Dixie Highway, Robert Emmett Hayes and Associates was the architectural firm that was selected to design the new building. Um, and the goal was a spring 2002 opening. The new building was to be twice as large as the Dixie Highway building, and it was priced at $5.5 million and um, would be built with the help of a $350,000 state grant. The planned branch was to have a larger meeting room, um, a separate children's department, a larger audiovisual section, and more computers. And also the plan was to put in a drive through window for patrons to easily pick up their materials on hold. And this was the first drive through window in the system. The library was also designed with the option for expansion in the future. So um, in the picture on the left here, you can see the 3D model of the new building, and um, this model now has a home in our local history and genealogy archives. So the groundbreaking was scheduled for July 10th, 2001, and on the right, library board members and others made it official with golden shovels, 
and children were able to participate too, and they received smaller shovels and hard hats. Um, excitement was felt all around by both patrons and staff, and Patty Richards, the coordinator for children's services for the system, said that it, it is for the children and for the future that we're building this library. Branch librarian Anita Carroll said, I can't wait, it's going to allow us to do our jobs 100% better. This is a special day for the library, for Erlanger, and for all the residents of Kitten County, said Library Director Wayne Angst. Besides providing quality library service, he said the new Erlanger branch will serve as a community center, a landmark, and a showplace that will attract development for the area. So construction began, and these are just a few of the many Erlanger construction photos that we have in our Faces and Places database. And on the top left, Director Wayne Angst is pictured at the construction site. And these pictures show the library as it was nearing completion. And as shared through a press release, architect Robert Emmett Hayes designed the library with soaring ceilings, walls of windows, and cozy reading nooks. And space and architectural elements such as cathedral ceilings were used to divine define various spaces and their functions in each part of the library. And these few pictures showcase some of the special features of the building, um, including the 37-foot clock tower and the children's department called Kid Town. In the new children's department, kids were able to stroll through a mini town with storefront facades, and um, there was a picture book place for toddlers and a cosmic corner cafe for older children. Also, a separate children's activity room was designed with a heated floor. Clouds and airplanes dotted the sky of Kid Town. In the photo at the top center, a construction worker is installing bricks in front of the fountain where the new reading garden was located. And engraved bricks and pavers were sold during construction and the reading garden featured um, regional plants and the focal point was the granite fountain. So the new library offered um, abundant, comfortable seating with more than two dozen seating areas and 59 computer workstations. And these pictures show the branch a little bit closer to move-in day. Um, however, before official move in, into the new building, um, patrons and staff had to say goodbye to the old one. So. After 24 years, the Erlinger branch on Dixie Highway closed its doors on September 28, 2002, and on that day, visitors were invited to stamp their painted handprint on a wall in the library's meeting room. And there was also a guest book for visitors to sign, which was placed in the time capsule of the new Erlinger branch. Refreshments were served throughout the day as patrons enjoyed the Dixie Highway location one last time. And, um... Library Director Wayne Angst and Branch Librarian Anita Carroll are pictured here on the far left. And then Anita, Anita Carroll is also pictured at the top and she's standing in the doorway of her new office. And a cart of materials um, is being wheeled into the branch and then on the right, a staff member is working on shelving the books. So the library was closed for two weeks to allow the move-in process to be completed. The new 34,294-square-foot building was officially dedicated October 13, 2002, with thousands in attendance. And on the left, Jim Nelson, the Kentucky State Librarian, is pictured next to Rep. Representative John Droud. And on the right is KCPL board member John Tolkey. And um, John Tolkey is presenting Representative Droud with the uh, first library card issued at the Erlanger branch. And patrons enjoyed refreshments, snacks, and raffles while exploring the new building. So the library continued to grow, and there are several photos of children's programs and um, patrons enjoying the space at Erlanger. And Susan Banks became branch manager in 2005, and she remained in that role until 2011. 
In 2011, Angela Payer was hired as the branch manager pictured at the bottom. And the following year, the branch celebrated its 10th anniversary. During its first 10 years in operation, the Erlinger branch welcomed over 4 million visitors and patrons checked out over 10 million items. And as previously mentioned, um, the building was designed with the option for expansion in the future. So in early 2016, that time came and plans to expand the Erlinger branch began to take shape. And the architectural firm Robert Emmett Hayes and Associates was again selected to design the new the new space. So the addition to the Erlinger branch included a large meeting room with a raised stage and a seating capacity of 450. The addition also included several new meeting rooms and a large makerspace designed with a curved wall of windows. And the makerspace was named the Stream Center of Learning and contained dozens of items and uh, pieces of equipment to assist patrons in creating and um, to learn about about science and the world around them. So the new edition was officially dedicated on January 11th, 2018. And the Erlinger branch continues to be one of the busiest libraries in Kentucky. If you have any questions, please contact us at the local history and genealogy department by phone at 859-962-4070. Um, by email at history at kentonlibrary.org or on the web. Thank you for watching.